she stood looking at Manamegali Vandiyathevas face. Vandiyathevan also stood with a smile. His mind was thinking about what to say to this girl and how to escape. At this moment a voice from somewhere called Mother. Did you call me? Asked. No, mind your own business. Said Manamekali. Immediately her days disappeared. She went near the hole through which Vandiyathevan had entered a while ago and looked inside. Then she signalled Vandiyathevan and took him a little distance in that room. He suddenly turned around and said, Sir. Tell the truth. You said that Chandramati called you, is that true? She asked. Yes, ma'am. When and where did she call you? A little ahead. You both came and looked and turned while I was hiding behind the monkey in the next room. After you turned she looked at me and said, Monkey. Are you in my room? It's convenient to scare off unwanted visitors, she said. It doesn't seem to fall on their ears. Would I have left her alone if she had fallen in my ear? She said. Princess. What is the use of being angry with one's friend? If my face and the face of a tailless monkey are the same, what will Chandramati do? A long way from your face and the face of the tailless monkey. Like the distance between the face of a monkey and the face of an owl hanging above it. Your face is not a monkey's face, nor an owl's face. But you have all the mischievousness of a monkey. Sometimes you wake up like an owl. Was it you who woke up looking into this mirror a little while ago? Yes, princess, I am. Why did you back off and hit the door? In this mirror near my face I saw the face of a divine maiden. I took my hand from the ivory which I was holding, wondering if the Divine Maiden was going to be afraid of my face, and the door closed by itself. Do you know who that goddess is? I didn't know at the time, but later I realized. What did you find out? What I saw was not a Divine Maiden, it was Mani Megaladevi, to whom Divine Maidens run and obey. I knew her to be Selvak Kumari of Sambuvarayar of Kadampur. I also remembered that she was the lovely younger sister of my lifelong friend Kana Moran. Manamekali's brows furrowed with a sneer mixed with anger, really? My Damayan Kantha Moran is their life friend. She said. Doubt it, princess. Don't you remember when I came here one day four months ago? I even came to that temple and saluted the mothers. Don't you remember that? I remember well, will I forget before then? Are you the prince of the monkey clan named Valavarayar Vandiyathevar? Yes, princess. I am the poor man who has no palace to live in and no kingdom to rule, bearing only the clan name of Arayan. Once upon a time, their Damayan told me so much about themselves. Once upon a time when Kanamaran and I were guarding Vedapena on the river bank, he often told us about them. I also had a dream. I was seeing. Then I forgot that thought. A wonderful thought appeared in Manamegali's heart. Kanamaran said that Ivan tried to stab him to death. What would it be for? Maybe about himself? Had he fought with Kanamaran for saying that he was not going to marry him? The thought created a storm of pleasure in her heart. She turned it into a storm of anger. She said, Sir. I don't need all the old stories now. Tell me the reason why you sneaked into this palace, if not, I must immediately call my friend and tell my father. Princess. I already told you why I came here. Some assassins were chasing me to kill me. When I was running away from them, I saw a hole in the earth. I knew it was some secret passage. When I came to escape through it, that passage brought me here. Sir. If you are a clean player, you are right. I have heard of many Asagaya Suras. But I have never heard of Suras like you. Uttara Kumaran should beg from you. Wasn't Sura in Vandiyathevan's mind the reason why Manamegali, who thought she was an amazing woman, stabbed herself like this? Goddess. They are seven and eight. I am one. They are armed and I have no weapon. My beauty has been swept away. Very good. Better go with that pesky veal, the veal that stabs your ally to death. 
Vandiyativan threw it away. Before he could open his mouth to answer, Manamekali asked, Did you run to escape the killers who tell the truth? Did you come here to kill? She asked. Vandiyathevan throbbed like one who put his foot in the fire and shouted, Shiva! Narayana! Who should I come here to kill? The lovely sister of my beloved friend? Why? He said. What did I see? You lie like a good friend? Didn't you try to stab that good friend in the back? For whatever reason, you could have come here to kill someone. My God! What vain accusation is this? I stabbed Kanamaran in the back? Would I have cut off my hand before doing such a thing? Princess! Who told you such a pernicious lie? My brother said it himself, I wouldn't have believed it if someone else had said it. Kandamarana said this? Then I was really a coward. Someone had stabbed him in the back and put him near the Tanjavar wall. I carried him unconscious and took him to the hut of Sendan Amuthan. Is this my reward? Princess! Why did I try to kill him? Did you tell me any reason? He said, he said. You insulted my beauty and despised me as a wretched woman. You said that the girls of Tanjavar were prettier than me. So Kanamaran got angry and punched you. You stabbed me from behind without being able to fight face to face. Is this all true or not? Lies. Lies. Terrible lies, I would have cut off my own tongue before calling themselves wretched. Did not Kanamaran insist that I should forget his sister? What for? He insisted that I forget the emperors who rule the kingdom because they are waiting to marry them. The water will make you forget me. I could not quite forget, but from that time I began to think of you as my lovely sister. Princess! Take me to Gondhamaran at once. Or call him here. I shall know why he told such a great lie, or, if he really meant it, I will remove the prejudice. You have come to finish what was started in Tanjavur. If that's the case. You tried to kill him there and it didn't work. God! I will come to find his palace to kill Kanamaran. What else came through the secret passage? There, listen closely. Those who came to kill me are still in the next room. Don't you hear them moving and talking? Why would they come to kill you? They look like witches. Maybe a human sacrificing mob. Manamegala smiled saying, It seems that you, the prince who matches all the ideals, have been caught for that. That's a wonder to me too, I don't know why they came to capture this owl wakeful monkey monkey. After hearing you, a suspicion arises. Perhaps my friend Kandamara himself has made such an arrangement. Take me to him at once. Either let him rid me of his guilt, or else let him let them be killed with their own hands. Why should the murderers be sent? Lady! Take Kandhamar immediately! Sir! Don't be in such a hurry! Kanamaran is not in town! Where has he gone? He's going to bring the Kari Kalers to Kanchi! They'll all be here tomorrow night, till then you! You're asking me to stay here until then? That's not fair! I didn't tell you to stay here. In a little while, the young queen of Palyavar will come here. Then Ikakai will not be able to come here. You know what kind of person Palyavatarayar is. If he sees you here, he will immediately cut you to pieces. Ah! How much desire the little girl has for Pentati! Manamekali smiled saying that. Vandiyathevan remembered all that had happened when Palyavatarayar came before him. Is that so? Are the Palyavatare very much in love with the Queen of Palyavur? He asked. It's a matter known to the whole country and city. Last time, they came here eight months ago. The old man did not even let the Queen of Palyavur come to that param. He protects it with such a look. This time they are going to stay here for a few days. The only problem is that the Queen of Palyavur wants her own Andapuram. I don't know if he's going to see us all this time, if he's going to let the old man see us. So what do I do now? That's what I've been thinking too ah. An idea strikes me. 
there is a private armory of my dame and Kanamaran in this mansion. I will take you there. You will stay there until Kanamaran arrives tomorrow evening. You can prove the truth or falsehood of what you say to Kanamaran in person. Princess. That's wrong. A very dangerous thing to do. What danger? If Kanamaran asked me how I got there, what would I say? What is said is what is said. You don't believe what I just said? When there are people in the next room looking for me. Sir. I'll check it out now. What are you going to test? I'm going to go into the next room and question those men. I'm going to find out if they came to kill you or if you brought them. Alas! If those wicked scoundrels were left alone with them. Who can do what to me in my palace? Look! Saying that Mani Megali pointed out the small folding knife that she had tucked into her waist without anyone knowing. No one can come to me and if there is any danger, you are here, Surati Surer. Madam! I don't have any weapons at the moment. Haven't you heard that a mighty man has a weapon? Your name is Mighty Man? Even girls will fight if they have a weapon in their hand. Why boys? Don't you worry. The one who was dusting in a room over there is our servant. He must have brought the others to the palace. They seem to be familiar to me. I'll find out what they're here for. Don't stand near the door. Go near the woodshed and hide a bit. Saying this, Manamegali went to the door leading to the hunting room and tried to open the door. Vandiyathevan walked hastily and went near the tree trunk and hid himself. The barn doors were open and he happened to look inside. It turned out that it was not a granary. It was gradually located inside the room. Musical instruments such as lyre, veena, madhalam, talam etc. were arranged at each step. He looked up a little and saw that the steps went up to the roof. By this time Manamegali opened the door of the hunting hall and entered. Vandiyadeva was amazed at her courage. At the same time, he made up his mind that there was no danger to Manamegali. Meanwhile the door opened from the other side of the room. Mother Mother! Chandramati came in shouting. Vandiyathevan was startled and entered the musical instrument shed so that she would not see him. Mother! Mother! The people of Tanjavur have arrived at the gate of the fort. The Maharani has asked them to fetch them at once. She shouted and looked around. She walked towards the open hunting hall door in front of her. If you stand near the door, you will know that Vandiyathevan is inside the barn. So he quickly climbed up a few steps. He knocked his knee on a harp and it sounded. Vandiyathevan panicked and climbed some more steps. His head hit the top of the barn. What's weird? The ceiling went up a little when it hit Vandiyadeva's skull. Vandiyathevan got suspicious and lifted the board with his hands. It went well up and light came through the opening. A rustling sound was heard in the distance. On one side there were stars shining in the sky. Vandiyadeva's heart leaped with excitement. He moved the board well and climbed up. He found that he had come to a part of the maki on top of the mansion. Moreover, that area was the same area where he had been lying comfortably taking in the air the other day. It was he who stood in the secret of the great pillars and learned about the deadly conspiracy of the petty kings. He pushed the board away and closed it as before. After closing, he realized that it was not easy to find such a way from the roof. There is no time to wonder and wonder about it now. I want to find a way to escape from there. Is the angel of fortune who has helped him all this time going to stop helping him? Vandiyathevan looked around on all four sides. Flags and torrents were flying everywhere and the entire palace area was a sight to behold. Damn! This seems to be Rajabazaram. Vandiyathevan walked slowly, looking around. There is no human traffic anywhere in Upper Mach. Until then we were lucky and then he walked a little faster. He came to Nila Matam where he was lying earlier. When looking from there, the outer wall of the palace, the courtyard between the walls and the palace, the place where the gathering of people took place, and the place where Sadi Yalasan took place were seen. But no humans were found in those places. The reason is not that difficult to find. 
At the front door of the palace was a single stone. Hundreds of lamps provided light. The drum beat was accompanied by the shouts of the people and the greetings of the people. As the entourage of Palyavatareya approached the palace gate, everyone went there to welcome them. That's why there is no crowd here. Aha! There is no doubt that indeed the goddess of fortune was on Vandiyadeva's side. What a wonderful opportunity to escape, such a time was not found even before half a century. Half a century later, this kind of facility would not have been available. Arriving near the place of deliberation, Vandiyathevan looked around once more, no one. He looked down and there was no one there either. He looked at the opposite wall and there was no one there, ah! What is this? A face in the middle of the branches above Madal. It looks like the face of Alvarkadian. Vanity. It was a place that looked like the face of Alvarkadian for the first time. So his mind has deceived him like that. And that's for a good reason. It's the perfect place for wall jumping. His inner mind has pointed it out and reminded him. He must escape before the reception is over and the crowd standing at the door comes in. How to get down to the yard? Cow. Here's a way. Here is a shed in the courtyard. It is like a shed for a wasp. A bamboo tree that had been buried for a shed had reached up to the top. Vandiyathevan jumped and grabbed it and went down with a gallop. He looked around again and saw no one. Above the machine, where he had stood a moment ago, he heard a gurgling sound. Aha! It seems that Manamegala came looking for her. Wicked girl! At this moment, if you get caught up with her, you will lose hope. Vandiyathevan ran across the open space of the yard in one run, and standing by the wall, looked back and saw a woman's figure on the machine. Neither Manamegala nor Chandramati is known. Whoever it was must have seen him run across the yard and luckily didn't shout. Good luck to whoever she is. Long live Maharasya! With this greeting in his heart, Vandiyadeva walked quickly to the side of the wall. The place where all Alwarkadian's face is visible on the wall has come. How to climb the wall there? It is so high. No ridges to hold onto the wall? Oh my god! Here's a trick. A few bamboo trenches for a cattle shed lay a short distance away, they seem out of date. He took one of those ditches in one leap. He leaned against the wall. The height of the trench and the height of the wall were correct. But do you want to stay on the trench wall? If you slip while climbing. If you slip you have to fall down. What's the point of sitting idly by? After checking the ditch twice, he started climbing through it. Halfway up the wall the trench began to slip. We are lost. If you fall down, you'll break your bones. Before he could think of that, the ditch stood firm again. A hand seemed to hold it from above. All we have to do is go crazy. Thinking that Vandiyathevan climbed up. As he grabbed hold of the top end of the wall, the trench slipped and fell down. The sound of its fall was like thunder in his ears. Good luck! The clamor at the fort gate was now even louder. So no one will fall in the ear. But the woman standing on the top floor opposite. It would have fallen on her ear. Vandiyadeva came back once more as he jumped over the wall and looked back in that direction. Vandiyadeva's evil character did not leave him. Bye. He waved his hand as if to say, and started down the other side of the wall. Getting down is not that difficult. Because the exterior of the wall is not as level as the interior. There were some ridges. The branches of the nearby trees were bumping against some of the walls and rubbing. With their help, Sarasaravinak descended. He laughed when he thought about how he had cheated Manamekali. Like an echo of that laugh, another laugh came from somewhere. Vandiyadeva's blood congealed in his body. He looked to jump down with trembling hands. He saw a dog waiting for him. No more thinking about climbing? You have to jump down. Jump, at least a fistful of meat should be given in this dog's mouth. Was that laughter heard a moment ago? Or the sound of a dog barking? Has someone been hiding on the side and let the dog go? Is it too risky to climb up? 
Is it too risky to jump down? Vandiyadeva's heart was swayed. His legs also swung to avoid being caught in the mouth of the leaping dog. 